Hello, and welcome to Easy English Interviews, the podcast for English language learning. My name is Chris Kent. I'm an associate professor of English as a Second Language in Japan. And in this podcast, I interview interesting people in Easy English so English students can practice their listening comprehension skills. Please enjoy listening to the interviews, and if you would like to check your comprehension, please look at the questions in the podcast episode notes. Or go to kjkentmsed.substack.com and click on the post for this episode. There, you can subscribe to my Substack and receive email notifications whenever a new interview is released. インタビューを確認したい場合は、ポッドキャストノートの質問を見るか、URLKJKENTMSED.SUBSCRIBE Okay, and now for the Easy English Interview. All right, so today we're going to be speaking with Dan McCarthy. Um, he's the first Canadian friend that I made in Nagano, and I'm very thankful for that. So thank you for coming, Dan. My pleasure. All right, so today I'm going to ask you a few simple questions and just relax and have fun and uh, enjoy. Okay. So my first question for you is, why did you choose to come to Japan uh, to teach English? And can you explain a little bit about how you came to be here? Well, I don't know. I chose Japan or Japan chose me. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, I was working for the Canadian government. Oh. And uh, at that time, it was contract work. So three months, renew, three months, renew. And finally, uh, I heard about the JET program. Oh, okay. And uh, that was back in 1992. Okay. So exactly 30 years ago from this month. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, at that time I decided to have a little adventure. So I was living in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And I thought I would come to Japan for one year and that would be the end. Mm. And here I am 30 years later. Yeah, it sounds very familiar. My idea was to come for at the most three years, yeah. and now it's 27 years for me. So. <laughs> no, no, crazy. Yeah. Okay, um, my next question is, um, what did you study before you came here in college or, or in high school or in university before you came to Japan? Uh, I went to university in my home province in Canada, mm -hmm. University of Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. and I studied finance and marketing and I had planned to be a stockbroker or an accountant or a banker, uh, and I'm an English teacher now. So uh, sometimes life takes lots of interesting twists and turns. For sure. And uh, here I am, an uh, English teacher. So is your, your job as an English teacher, does that also involve doing some like business and accounting and things that you studied in university? Absolutely. Well, the marketing side is very important. Mm. So uh, the most important things I've done for study is to learn Japanese so I can make my pamphlets and homepage and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, also the marketing side uh, helps me a lot making business plans and uh, how to promote the business and so on. Okay. And so in that same vein, um, you know, can you explain a little bit about the good and bad parts of your job? Um, well, the good parts, the part I enjoy the most is uh, when people walk through my door with no English ability. Mm. And then some years later, they're communicating at a high level with, uh, with um, native speakers from uh, different countries and enjoying their trips abroad and so on. Right. So the kind of self-satisfaction of watching people improve their English 
that is the best part of the job. Um, the worst part is the long hours. Mm. Uh, I usually work uh, from 8 or 9 in the morning until 10 p.m. So yeah, those are very, very long hours and I feel a little bit tired as I get older, mm -hmm. but um, still enjoying it, so I'll keep it going for a while yet. I see. Okay. Um, now, getting back to when you were younger, um, can you remember at all like what you wanted to be when you grew up? Uh, when I was very young, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. Mm -hmm. Uh, me too. Oh yeah. Mm. Well, until I realized I was too slow to, <laughs> <laughs> to uh, keep up with the, uh, the the speedsters, right? The fast guys. Um, and as I grew up there, I had lots of different dreams of, over time. Uh, wanted to be a lawyer at one point, but then I, I realized um, I, that was not for me. Mm -hmm. um, usually, bad people. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I gave that up but uh, uh, sometimes you just don't have a, a concrete plan and you somewhere along the road you suddenly realize ah I want to do this and so mm -hmm. that's what happened to me here okay um, so and let's talk a little bit more about Japan so what places have you visited in Japan and among those places what would you consider, or where would you consider to be your favorite places? Uh, I've been to a lot of places in Japan because my son was a baseball player mm. at Sakuchose High School. So um, he uh, had lots of uh, games outside of Nagano Prefecture. Right. And in the end, uh, we went to Koshien. Oh, great. And um, Koshien, of course, um, in the Osaka area. So that has to be my favorite place in Japan is Osaka. I love the takoyaki and the okonomiyaki. Mm. And I love um, the frankness of the people mm. in Osaka. Uh, usually if I'm in Nagano, people will sometimes look the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but in Osaka, Hey, Gaijin-san, come buy some takoyaki. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. So that's probably uh, my favorite place. In, and my favorite food in Japan is a kushikatsu. Mm. So that combination makes me, draws me to Osaka every time. Yeah, I've been to Osaka a few times and I definitely like the food. But I also liked how it seems everyone in Osaka thinks that they're a comedian. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, I know. They're always trying to make jokes. I, yeah. like, I like that. That's kind of my hobby too. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Um, my next question for you is, what particular things do you like about Japanese culture? Yeah, um, I, I love a lot of Japanese culture. I've, I've tried everything from... Mm -hmm. uh, wearing kimonos, uh, tea ceremony, flower arrangement. I've tried everything, but now my, my favorite thing is uh, carrying the mikoshi. Oh, yeah. Uh, so last weekend uh, in my old town, I don't live there anymore, mm -hmm. but uh, in, in Ariyama, uh, we have a gionsai, and um, we haven't had it because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So um, it was kind of... Uh, not exactly uh, carrying the mikoshi, we put it on a truck because everybody had to wear a mask. Uh, okay. But I, uh, during the the real uh, festival, the Gion festival, I, I love that culture. I love the happy. I love the camaraderie of being with uh, so many guys in close quarters and uh, putting uh, the god on your shoulder. Mm. Um, yeah, love it. So Mikoshi is my favorite culture by far. Yeah, I think I've never actually carried one, but I have been a part of a few festivals like that where, um, you know, I was either pulling, pulling something or I was, you know, joining a large group of people working together to yeah. do something. And it, there's something to be said about that, a very strong sense of community. Maybe. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And um, the beer doesn't hurt either. <laughs> yeah, having a cold drink after is, <laughs> is important. Yeah. Yeah, especially with the guys, it's really good. That's right. Okay, so um, a little bit more personal now. Can you tell me uh, what your hobby is and why you like it? 
Yeah, my uh, my most recent hobby is um, started one year ago because we got a, a new dog. Mm -hmm. So um, taking care of her is kind of full time. Uh, get up at six in the morning, go for a nice morning walk mm -hmm. with her. That's my favorite. Uh, but uh, one of the hobbies I was running a bar before uh -huh. and um, whiskey. Mm -hmm. Whiskey is my hobby. <laughs> so. Uh, I enjoy not only drinking it, but uh, studying it and learning about where it's from and different smells and different uh, flavors. And uh, I really enjoy um, kind of learning something about that quite regularly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in Japan, the Nihonshu or the sake culture is, yeah. is similar. Um, and uh, also, you know, in Europe, the wine culture also. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you have any family here in Japan? Well, I have uh, a son from my previous marriage. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually, this uh, uh, next Saturday, I will be getting married for the second time. Well, congratulations. I, I can't wait. Yes, uh, you are invited, of course. <laughs> thank you, thank you. One of the main guests. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I have my new wife and uh, her mother. We live together, mm -hmm. so I'm a kind of Masuo-san type. I see. Uh, and um, yeah, so that's uh, my family in Japan now. Okay, okay. Um, so how about uh, you know you're talking about getting married now? So beyond that, what is your plan for the future here in Japan? Yeah, well, I'm going to keep going with my um, English business, mm -hmm. and uh, I live in Obuse now, so it was a big move I made last year, mm -hmm. so moving from Nagano City. So I had a bar in Nagano City, and um, because of the move to Obuse, we decided to close the bar, but at some point, I would like to open the bar again in Obuse, and uh, uh, again, provide... Uh, delicious whiskies to some customers and anybody listening who might be keep your eyes open for a future um, Dan's bar will be open at some point. Yeah, well maybe in the future we can do another one of these interviews at your bar. That would be perfect. That would be perfect. <laughs> Great. Okay, my last question, and it's one that I ask all my guests. Um, if you could give any advice to students who are studying English, what would that advice be? Well, uh, I, my two biggest pieces of advice are, of course, um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That is uh, the biggest thing that holds back Japanese students. Um, I always tell a, a, the funny story uh, of when I first came to Japan, because I was just starting to learn Japanese, and I wanted to say to somebody, mm -hmm. Shinji te kudasai. Mm -hmm. But... I made a mistake. I said, Shinde kudasai. <laughs> so uh, Yikes. They, they looked at me very surprised, but uh, they understood. And then I never ever forgot that uh, one point. And right. so by making a mistake, um, it uh, sometimes actually helps keep it in your memory and uh, you, it sticks with you forever. Yeah, I think learning things through experience is a lot stronger than having things just told to you. Yeah, absolutely. Just reading pages in a book is not quite the same. So, mm -hmm. so always uh, uh, never be afraid to make a mistake. And the other thing uh, within English, I always say, learn pronunciation. People think that pronunciation can't be studied. Mm -hmm. There's many ways to study it, of course. And... Um, the best, of course, is getting a native speaker teacher. Right. Um, and uh, pronunciation not only uh, helps you communicate better with other people, but it unlocks the door to listening. Mm. So to be uh, trying and studying pronunciation, even record your own voice and listen to yourself. I used to have a radio program and uh, I would receive a CD afterwards mm -hmm. and the program is all in Japanese mm -hmm. and I thought I did a great job today but then I listened to the CD and I thought oh well my Japanese needs to improve there right and that was just just from my own listening I could tell or I could understand uh, that uh, um, 
you know, my Japanese wasn't perfect. So um, I, I always advise people because everybody knows what you have to study grammar, you have to study um, vocabulary and so on. But pronunciation is something that really needs to be worked on. True. And it is something that it's hard to um, really understand how good or bad your own pronunciation is unless you're speaking with someone who can give you feedback. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dan. I know you're extremely busy and you have a class you have to go and teach. So I'd like to thank you for coming today. And hopefully, as I said earlier, we can do this again in the future. Yeah, certainly. That'd be great. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Dan McCarthy. And I would like to say thank you very much for listening. Also, I hope that you will try the comprehension questions when you have free time so you can check your listening ability in English. And please, if you would like to be notified by email whenever a new podcast is up, please become a subscriber at kjkentmsed.substack.com. That's kjkentmsed.substack.com. If you become a paid subscriber there, you can read transcripts of the interviews and check your comprehension answers. You can also check out Easy English Interviews now at easyenglishinterviews.locals.com or you can watch them on YouTube. All right, thank you again and see you next time when we will speak with another interesting person. Bye-bye from Easy English Interviews.